Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to another Super Tease video. And it is very rare to get something that captivates me like this, that's got me thinking at night, how can I min-max this? How can I possibly be the best in wait every waking moment trying to min-max it? But the Preservation Evoker has hit that nail for me. It's it's itched that scratch or scratched that itch. Like, uh, I can't even think straight. I'm thinking so much about Preservation Evoker to get these sentences going. But in today's video, I wanted to cover some PVP tips and tricks for the Preservation Evoker so that if you've been captivated like me, you can avoid some of these serious pitfalls that I was falling into and maybe getting some rage whispers from people uh, kind of needlessly as I was on my adventure to learn this. One of the main mechanics for the Preservation Evoker is Echo. You can see me applying it here onto all three allies and I can use that to duplicate my next heal. So we're going to duplicate Reversion, which is like Rejuvenation. We get two heal over time effects. When we're silenced, we want to use Rescue. This is one of our main heals that we can use while silenced with a talent that provides a shield. That shield has mitigated damage. We then chain into Emerald Communion, which can be interesting interrupted with some CC effects such as fear and incapacitates. So you want to use it when you're stunned and out of range of incoming fears to be able to heal your allies when, when you are CC'd. Although this is one of the first mistakes you're probably going to make as an evoker. I didn't start the fight with nullifying shroud. You want to be running this PvP talent and you want to be casting it before the battle has engaged to waste as much time of your enemies as possible. Next we've got time dilation. This is a cooldown that you want to be using first because it's a one minute cooldown and mitigates a lot of damage. If it's not enough as it is here against a demon hunter we use tip the scales dream breath root the priest to prevent them from running away and try and fire breath them while time dilation and our dream breath is healing the warrior we can then fly with verdant embrace into our warrior to get a big instant heal and then go for a casted spirit bloom which are we are going to combine with our obsidian scales because we have a talent that gives us immunity to interrupts and silences this is something that i am aiming to try and do a lot more because when you need to cast a Spirit Bloom for it, that's your big casted heal, like a Holy Light for a Paladin or a big Rejuvenation or something, you know, uh, for a Resto Druid, using Obsidian Scales to be immune to silences or interrupts to guarantee that you get it. You want to go to one charge of it because you can charge it all the way up, which just makes it AoE. Just go to one charge, let the Spirit Bloom go off for a big heal, and you can combo that with the Obsidian Scales. Um, but yeah, the first big pitfall that you're going to be making on this Preservation Evoker is not running Nullifying Shroud and then just forgetting to press it because you're so excited about pressing all your other heals healing abilities and flying around the map to go immune to the first three CC effects because otherwise you can fall behind very easily. Your main cooldowns to survive are going to be the Emerald Communion. That's like your best button in the game. So you generally want to try and save it if you can, but you're going to use that big button when you're CC'd and either yourself is dying and you're in range of your allies and they're dying, you can heal them with it. Uh, if you're not CC'd, you want to be using Rewind. Rewind is a much better heal, but you need to make sure that your allies have taken a lot of damage, then rewind after the fact so that they're going to be recovering HP as opposed to, you know, it rewind isn't going to do anything if you time it like that. But time dilation is kind of like your spam one minute button. It's the earthen wall. It's the iron bark. Uh, if you've played other healing classes, you can see in this game, I might have made the same mistake by not nullifying shroud. And look, you're going to get caught into an intimidating shout right off the bat. And being CC'd is the most dangerous thing as a preservation evoker. You want to be getting these nullifying shrouds. You want trying to immune cc with your deep breath immune cc with your dream breath and now i'm trying to compensate casting a nullifying shroud while my teammates are running in fortunately they've already got their darknesses down we're gonna have to reapply our echoes remember you want to put echo on all the targets to use all of your essence it'll regenerate and then figure out who they're hitting and then duplicate the heal on that target so they're hitting the bottom demon hunter so i'm duplicating all my heals use tip the scales dream breath with an echo that duplicates two of the heal over time effects uh, and then we're going to throw out a root to the dps and try and move in aggressively for sleepwalk on the healer as my allies have popped their offensive cooldowns. Then I want to combo that with a Fire Breath. This way, I always use Sleepwalk, Root, Fire Breath in that order to CC attackers, CC the healer, and then go for big damage. If you try and run in and just do big damage, you might end up dying. Here, we're taking a lot of damage on our middle Demon Hunter. So we got a couple options. We're trying to be greedy. We use Verdant Embrace, but... Ultimately, time dilation is just the best response to things like the, the avatar proct from the Fury Warrior uh, or the recklessness. Just better to mitigate that damage. Generally, you don't want to overlap it um, with cooldowns that your partners have used, like Blur. So, But I'm playing with no add-ons right now, which is a bit rough. Here, we use a knockback to interrupt a heal. You really want to get good at using the tail swoop and the, the knockback, because this is a lot of min-max. Like I pushed that flash heal back. Who knows if that actually ultimately is the reason why our team was able to win the round or not. And then you can knock enemies up on their cast bars as well that's kind of like the late stages you should probably focus on just the healing portion first which is echo and duplicating what heals you want to duplicate and remembering which targets you're duplicating them on because that's where the 
you know, the the meat and potatoes, you know, that's the 80% of preservation, where if you've got that, you're going to start climbing rating. And then the last 20% to get towards the top end of the ladder is going to be you know, landing these knockups, getting good CC, but but focus on the, the strong basics, which is the echo. I like echoing all three people at the start of a round, and then figure out who they're hitting, cast reversion on the target that they're hitting, then cast another echo on that target, and either hard cast a dream breath with one charge, or tip the scales the dream breath if I'm running out of time to cast, uh, to make them as heal, much heal or time effects as possible, right? It'd be like overgrowthing your target as a druid and keeping them as hot as, as possible before they make the enemies make a push um, with CC. And then the next highest layer would be immuning interrupts, immuning silences with the obsidian scales. Uh, that's the playstyle that I've been preferring. I also have some talents that make it so reversion will heal a portion of the damage taken in the last five seconds. So another way to like emergency heal recover if you're afraid of casting is echo reversion. Like your partner's taking a bunch of damage, echo reversion, that's going to bounce them up. They take a bunch of damage, echo reversion, and it's going to heal them quite a lot without having to cast or echo verdant embrace. Here we can try and root the demon hunter. We miss. Tough luck there if we'd landed that root. We probably would have devastated the team here, uh, but now we can see our warrior fully dotted. So we're going to echo the warrior, uh, and then we're going to pull away from the engagement, try and figure out who they're attacking. They've stunned the warrior, so now we can use our reversion. That's going to duplicate the hot. We're going to verdant embrace in. We get silenced. So again, we can use rescue when we're silenced. I should use it here. Target on the warrior, and then pull the warrior. That gives them a bit of a shield when I'm silenced. Uh, nullifying shroud is up, but silence will go through it. Here we're casting the dream breath. We feel like we've got time, so we echoed into dream breath. Casted. We have two hots on the warrior. He's max hotted. We're going to hot up the demon hunter just in case they swap targets uh, and then time dilate the warrior to get them as aggressive as possible we're going to cast a sleepwalk here I, don't, I didn't notice my warrior actually went on the healer when i cast that I thought we were still in the dps but as soon as i saw him switch targets i also fire breath uh the priest for a swap they're going hard on our, our demon hunter here and this is where the panic moment comes in right i tried to fly in with verdant embrace i my team was kind of a little disjointed but i did have tip the scales i could have tipped the scales instantly spirit bloomed there or i could have rewinded and that's something that you need to kind of be ahead of damage. They swapped off my warrior, paying attention to swaps. This is like a pitfall you could fall into. If you're tunnel vision healing one target, you think that it's all right, it's going good. You gotta be ready for enemies to swap targets because that's gonna be a dangerous point for you uh, as the preservation evoker because you do commit so many resources to one target with hots like a resto druid would. So in that position, I needed to get ready for a swap. I was way too ahead of myself. Um, aggressively, you still need to really be on your toes uh, with this class and a lot of these solo shuffle rounds don't, don't kind of like count yourself as a win uh, before the round has really fully played itself out. Be ready for a swap uh, onto your partners and have a cooldown prepared. Uh, rewind right there would have easily have saved my partner. Would have got another round win uh, on this solo shuffle. I do recommend actually doing what I'm doing right now for yourself personally if you're having struggles climbing uh, is to just record yourself, go back and watch it and look, how did that game end? What buttons did I have? What was I looking at at a specific moment? Because right there I was looking at the disc priest thinking I was winning the game, killing him and not at my demon hunter who just got one shot uh so like always paying attention to different locations but here game has started echo on all three players we're trying to figure out who they're going after we're going to nullify and shroud to immune cc behind the pillar demon hunter randomly trinkets a stun so we can root him behind the pillar and just whoop, adios <laughs> see you later i don't want anything to do with that we still haven't figured out who they're attacking so we're holding on to our echoes we hover in and look for a sleepwalk overlapped with fear i should have held the sleepwalk here and canceled it um but then i see the shadow priest with mind games so i'm going to reversion the echo on my shadow priest get the double hot but then i see my warrior get stunned so we're going to echo the warrior and likely cast reversion there or maybe attempt the scales dream breath or hard cast a dream breath we go for reversion two hots on both of them they're both feeling pretty safe another echo uh, and then we're going to time dilate our warrior this is because our shadow priest can use dispersion whereas warrior might die through their personals so we can use tip the scales fire breath now this is super risky to do uh, but i saw the momentum and the cc on the priest ramping up and like why is this priest out in the middle of nowhere with the shadow priest and warrior so i use tip the scales for fire breath and this is why like balancing offense and defense with this class is so fantastic to try and min max it because i just shortcutted the game by using my button that's normally to heal to do damage instead by noticing an opportunity now generally you want to pay attention to the classes you're playing with if you're playing with slow classes like affliction lock you know going for a tip the scales fire breath it, probably not going to kill the target but fury warrior that's got eight stack mortal strike and shadow piece siphon and they're silencing the target it probably is going to die if you get a lot of damage out. Another min-max point for the Preservation Evoker is to be using Azur Strike when you have free globals. This is your, your like your claw attack, but it snares enemies when talented for it. Again, I'll have my talent build linked in the description below if you would like it. Uh, and this is important to min-max in between because you can snare enemies coming at you for crowd control, snare enemies trying to run away and escape. So you can be literally always trying
trying to think of like what is the best button I need to be pressing and it's so much fun because of that it's always a challenge at the end of the round there's going to be like 10 things you could have done differently and then the outcome of the game could have been completely different which is amazing like this is this is the type of gameplay that uh really excites me um in any video game but start of the round echo on all three allies figure out who they're going to attack I'm assuming it's shadow priest because it's a shadow priest but I see my demon hunter kind of deep so I'm still targeting them we're feeling they haven't attacked anybody yet so we're holding on to our reversion getting ready now they've charged our priest we know they're on the priest uh, and the fury warrior is going to be building ms stacks so we need to get those hots going again i actually cast a reversion on demon hunter which is a mistake i, I think they're split maybe at the moment um, but reversion on Shadow Priest should have been the move here. Actually, they did end up hitting Demon Hunter, so maybe just double hotting both DPS when you're uncertain is an all right maneuver. We get feared here because guess what? We forgot to cast Nullifying Shroud. Got to cast Nullifying Shroud before the, the round starts because casting it here when your teammates are at 10% health is risky. We can cast Rewind. See, I'm not crowd controlled. Enemies, allies taking lots of damage. I'm going to use Rewind. And then I'm going to use Tip the Scales and Dream Breath, get some big heal over time effects, get time dilate out, and try and recover. I've still held on to Emerald Communion. I still have Rescue. We still have obsidian scales to free cast uh we still have our covenant ability because this is the pre-patch it's not going to be available at level level 70. we land a double root onto the dps reposition with hover away from the priest who is trying to fear us and this is where we're using reversion uh echo reversion echo reversion echo reversion because it's really hard damage to heal through right now so as i'm repositioning i'm using those instant heals and then when i can finally like post up and bunker down i can use obsidian scales to immune interrupts reposition and cast living flames when i don't have spirit bloom or dream breath and just kind of mash those out as much as possible sometimes you're not going to be able to win around sometimes the enemy is just going to cleave down your target and there's really not much that you can do about it um here we've used verdant embrace jumping into our ally we can use an echo we can reposition also here our shadow priest you know they're on top of them pick them up reposition them over here this is the alternative use for rescue if the enemies do not have silence effects and you need to use it for the shield you can just use it to reposition Sometimes repositioning an ally is not going to be too good. Uh, here it was good because our demon hunter stunned the enemy and they weren't able to instantly get back, but it's not very hard to get back to a shadow priest. Uh, so moving a shadow priest up Z-axis is generally better, but now we're getting offensive. We slept the healer, we cast some living flames, and guess what? We net out the kill. I thought that we weren't going to win this round, but we're still able to win the round. So once you're in a position where you're comfortable, you've survived, and the team looks stable, getting offensive and doing damage is really valuable, and that's why I was talking about it uh, before the, the, the beginning of that round. It's really important to get offensive when you notice that you have time but as kind of just a roundup here for the pvp tips and tricks for preservation evoker focus on the healing rotation focus on echo reversion echo dream breath uh, and then use tip the scales dream breath tip the scale spirit bloom if you don't have dream breath in a scenario spirit blooms a, a much bigger instant heal than dream breath dream breath is like a slow over time effect heal so think of them like that you need an emergency lay on hands Tip the scales, spirit bloom. I'm trying to like hot up my teammates. Uh, tip the scales, dream breath. That's going to keep them overgrowth fully hotted. Time dilation slows down damage for you to cast spells is also another way to think about it. You want to be using that as like your first line of defense. And then if that's not enough, move to the next stage, which is rewind, which is Emerald Communion. Try to use Emerald Communion if you're CC'd and rewind if you're not. And then if later on you're not CC'd, but you can't out put enough healing, Emerald Communion is still really good heal. And you can move beside your allies. And for number one pitfall, cast nullifying shroud before the game starts i'm not gonna do it here am i i'm not gonna do it here in the final round am i cast nullifying shroud i've lost so many rounds just by forgetting to cast nullifying shroud and look i didn't do it again i didn't do it again so this is a, that's a big one make sure that you're doing that other than that thank you very much for watching the video i hope that you got something out of this i know it can be really complicated and really tough to try and figure out something that's just come out and like you're probably failing a lot like i was and i want to try and reduce the amount of pain that you need to go through that is the purpose of the channel here i hope that you enjoyed the video thank you very much for watching comment like, subscribe, and I will catch you in the next one.